In its early years, Hamilton Avenue was known as St. Clair's Trace, a dusty Miami Indian trail that provided the only passage up this steep hill. In 1813, William Carey cleared a small plot of land at the top of the hill, built a log cabin, and began a settlement known as Pleasant Hill. In time, the St. Clair's Trace gave way to a toll road, which carried a daily stagecoach from Cincinnati to Richmond, Indiana. This is the story of how Hamilton Avenue became a route on the Underground Railroad. William Carey and his brother Christopher fought with the New Hampshire troops in the Revolutionary War. Christopher was paid in land grants for his service, and he and his brother William, like many others, came to Cincinnati to claim their land. After fighting a war for their own personal freedom, many coming west no longer could support holding others in bondage. Over 5,000 black men, both free and enslaved, served on both sides in the Revolutionary War, hoping that it would end slavery. The new day that they had worked so hard to attain was never realized, and many black veterans remained enslaved. The U.S. Congress prohibited slavery in the newly acquired Northwest Territory, and a few free black veterans did come west to claim their land. The Revolutionary War not only failed to end slavery, but ten years later, Congress passed the first Fugitive Slave Act, giving local authorities of both free and slave states the power to legally kidnap any black person they thought to be an escaped slave and made it a federal crime to assist runaways. While this act was never widely enforced, it was a huge setback for the cause of universal freedom. In contrast, Canada passed the act against slavery, prohibiting slavery within the border of modern-day Ontario. So while freedom seekers in Ohio could be returned, those who reached Canada had a chance to live free without fear of being recaptured. After a decisive American victory at the Battle of Fallen Timbers, the Treaty of Greenville was signed in 1795, forcing Native Americans to cede much of their land to the United States. With the area deemed safe for American settlement, pioneers came down the Ohio River on flatboats and on wagon trains across the National Road to start a new life in the West. With the promise of cheap, fertile land, and the prohibition of slavery, 400 Quaker families resettled in Ohio and Indiana. They brought newly freed slaves with them, helping them found free black settlements. Anti-slavery pioneers consciously settled along major routes north and along creeks at the mouth of the Ohio River so that they could assist freedom seekers on their way to Canada. In the early years, runaways from Kentucky, Virginia, and Tennessee could find their way north along the Mill Creek and continue north up the ravine to what is now Laboida Woods. Anti-slavery minded citizens created hiding places for food, and Mount Healthy's free black community likely provided a safe resting place on their journey. Many who found their way across the Ohio River chose to stay in Cincinnati, and the city's black population quickly increased to over 2,000. In 1829, the physical and legal assaults on the black community forced over 1,000 to leave for Canada. The Lane Seminary debates five years later convinced many to demand the immediate emancipation of all those enslaved. In the following decades, advocates of emancipation were also targeted by violent white mob uprisings across the country. The 1836 pillage of the anti-slavery newspaper offices in Cincinnati the 1837 murder of abolitionist Reverend Elia Lovejoy in Illinois, and the arrest of John Van Zant in Glendale, Ohio, converted many to the abolitionist cause. The repressive laws in slave states fed the wave of freedom seekers and pushed white anti-slavery advocates into joining the Underground Railroad. In 1847, Levi Coffin moved to Cincinnati to open a store selling items not made by slave labor. He was a Quaker from the abolitionist community of Newport, Indiana, and brought his years of experience in creating safe routes north to Canada to the existing Freedom Network in Cincinnati's black community. A stronger interracial underground railroad formed along the Ohio River, which used many new means of transportation to lead more than 40,000 to freedom in Canada. Mount Healthy, then Mount Pleasant, 
was a midway point on the road from Cincinnati to Hamilton, Ohio, and since its founding in 1817 was the commercial, religious, and social hub for the surrounding farm families. In the 1840s, the village hosted conventions for the Hamilton County branch of the American Anti-Slavery Society. The Philanthropist, a national abolitionist newspaper printed in Cincinnati, reported attendance upward of 300, including women, which was unusual for the times. Founded on Christian moral arguments against slavery, some anti-slavery society members became frustrated by slaveholders' unyielding control over the two-party political system. In 1840, some members broke away from the society and voted to move into electoral politics. A third party was born, the Liberty Party. The local Liberty Party, which included abolitionists such as Charles Cheney, Freeman Carey, and Salmon P. Chase, held conventions at the Free Meeting House in Mount Healthy. However, not everyone in Mount Healthy agreed on matters of abolition. The Mount Healthy Christian Church expelled Aaron Lane, a local farmer and one of three church elders, because of his insistence that the church take an active stance against slavery. Favoring emancipation was a social risk that Lane and many others took. By 1848, College Hill was quickly growing with the advent of two colleges, Ohio Female College and Farmers College, both founded by anti-slavery-minded professors and boards of trustees. Farmers College attracted the sons of slaveholders, as well as Quaker students from Indiana's abolitionist communities. The college quietly became connected with Levi Coffin's established underground railroad routes. One of the Quaker students, Elihu Beard, was the son of the Underground Railroad conductor William Beard. In the diary he kept during his year at Farmers College, the young student wrote, The world is full of tyranny and oppression of outrage and wrong. The person that does anything to establish right and justice accomplished a great work. The second fugitive slave law was passed in 1850 and was enforced. It brought harsher punishments and allowed slave hunters to legally claim any black person they saw to be an escaped slave. This terrorized free blacks and outraged the abolitionists. The publication of Uncle Tom's Cabin in the following year brought thousands of readers closer to the brutal realities of slavery. Although safer to escape in small groups, the 1853 escape of 28 slaves from Boone County, Kentucky was widely talked about to show the growing effectiveness of the Underground Railroad. On Saturday night, April 2nd, a white radical abolitionist, John Fairfield, led them across the Ohio River into Lawrenceburg, Indiana, where they continued on into Cincinnati. When he arrived, Fairfield contacted John Hatfield, a trusted Underground Railroad agent and African-American deacon at the Zion Baptist Church. Levi Coffin helped to conceal the large group as they traveled through the city. Hiring carriages, they posed as a funeral procession headed towards Westland Cemetery, but continued through Cumminsville to College Hill. They spent a day in College Hill, where the Reverend Jonathan Cable and the Women's Anti-Slavery Sewing Society gathered clothing for the large group. To avoid the slave hunters, they spent more than a week in the black community of Cabin Creek, near Newport, Indiana. They evaded their captors and continued on to Michigan with the help from both black and white conductors. On April 19, 1853, Abolitionists Laura Hovland and Henry Bibb observed the group crossing the Detroit River to Freedom, singing, I'm on my way to Canada, where colored men are free. In 1855, College Hill made the abolitionist newspaper the North Star. A group of white ruffians forcefully removed and tried to spirit away Joe, an 18-year-old free black barber here in College Hill. Neighbors heard the commotion and were able to free Joe before the mob got away. Events like this made many free blacks fear they would never attain full citizenship rights. Deciding that it was too dangerous to live in Ohio, Farmers College Sexton Philip Younger and activist John Hatfield both moved to Canada after aiding so many others to freedom. Later interviewed in Canada, Philip said, I had rather starve to death here, being a free man, than to have plenty in slavery. A year later, the Supreme Court ruled in the Dred Scott case that blacks had no rights which the white man was bound to respect, 
and rejected any territory's right to ban slavery within its own borders. Supreme Court Justice John McLean, president of the board at the Ohio Female College, was one of the two dissenting voices on the Dred Scott decision. The Supreme Court's ruling inflamed public opinion in the North, leading to a hardening of anti-slavery attitudes and a surge in popularity for the new Republican Party. The drumbeat of war began, and by 1861, became deafening. The fate of over two million women, men, and children still held in bondage would now be decided by the outcome of a war between the states. Levi Coffin, Laura Hovelin, and many other workers on the Underground Railroad now turned their focus on aiding the contraband blacks that needed clothing, medical attention, and food. With the outbreak of the war, life on Hamilton Avenue, and in the whole nation, changed forever. Let me take you on a short tour of some of the sites rich in abolitionist history along Hamilton Avenue. The beautiful home of Zebulon Strong, a supporter of the anti-slavery Liberty Party, sits along Hamilton Avenue, where the community would hide food in a secure place and offer shelter to freedom seekers who came up the ravine that is now La Boyda Woods. Ohio Female College was built on the 15-acre site that is now Children's Hospital. Founded in 1848, it gave young women access to higher education. Just a few blocks away, Farmers College, now the site of New Aiken High School, attracted the sons of farmers, including many southern slaveholders. Here, students were taught how to apply science to agriculture in a liberal arts setting. These colleges are what gave College Hill its name. Founded as a new school Presbyterian church in 1850, the College Hill Presbyterian Church was led by many Farmers College faculty. College Hill's Jonathan Cable, an underground railroad worker, became a free Presbyterian minister, making the statement that he could not worship with slaveholders as the new school churches allowed. The debate over slavery that was sweeping the nation raged on here in College Hill. The College Hill History Mural, across from the Hodap Funeral Home, tells the history of College Hill through a series of weather vanes. Isaac Jackson recorded the weather weekly from 1818 to 1848 and published his findings, making a major scientific contribution to the young nation. There is a weather vane celebrating College Hill's Underground Railroad history. La Boyda Carey Cemetery, at the corner of Hamilton and Galbraith, is where many Revolutionary War veterans and La Boyda Carey family members are buried. The poets Alice and Phoebe Carey, later involved in women's suffrage and abolitionist causes, lived at the Carey Cottage in North College Hill from 1832 to 1850. The cottage is an excellent example of an 1840s household with historically accurate period furnishings. The Mount Healthy History Museum is housed in the Mount Healthy Free Meeting House, the site of the countywide Liberty Party conventions of the 1840s. Today, it is a museum with many artifacts of the early life in Mount Healthy. We hope you will visit these sites and continue to learn more about Hamilton Avenue's rich abolitionist history. Majestic through our nation, bearing on its trains a story, liberty, a nation's glory. Roll it along, roll it along, roll it along through the nation, freedom's car, emancipation. Roll it along, roll it along, roll it along through the nation, freedom's car, emancipation.